Hey makeup marketers, it's Emily Segrin. I promised you guys I would do a separate video with answers to your questions. Uh, the presentation that we had last Friday ended up going, uh, I think, close to three hours. Um, so I didn't want to make you suffer any longer through question and answer. So this is my separate video um, where I'm going to go through the list of questions that were collected. Uh, so thank you Wendy who uh, volunteered to put these all together in a nice format for me um, and organize them so I could just go through and answer. Alright, uh, so hopefully you all have your online access to the training. Um, if you are having issues logging in or accessing it, please let me know. You should have received uh, an email with your username and password. Hey Anna! And uh, you can log into that website and you should be able to click on my library and you'll always have access to that boot camp presentation. And then I also have the uh, activity sheets posted on there so you can print those out and review them as well. Alright, so let's get started on these questions here. Uh, the first one is from Barbara Rippert and it says, how to place the red banner above my blog on Google Blogger? Um, well, I think she is referring to the subscription header that I have on my blogs. Um, so first I use WordPress. So that is actually a plugin from WordPress. So you will have to research to see if Blogger has something similar. Um, I would do a search on Google for Blogger um, blog subscription because you want people to subscribe to your blog so that it gets emailed to them when you create a new post. Um, the tool that I use that has that subscription banner is actually part of Constant Contact which is an email marketing system that I'm using. Um, I don't know that it makes sense for everyone to have a separate email program because it does cost money and one of the main reasons I started it was so that I could email all of you guys. Um, so I know you don't want to be added to my auto email program. I obviously have a, a much different message that I want to send out when I'm marketing to Avon reps. Um, so you can take a look at Constant Contact. Um, it is another paid service so I know we all want to watch our budget and, and not uh, over commit to too many tools and then run out of money so um, feel free to check it out if you'd like make sure it makes sense for your Avon business to add on uh, extra tools uh, second question from Barbara is I post to buffer if I post my blog daily do I really need buffer um, so what I use buffer for is to promote my uh, blog posts. So um, almost every one of my social media posts has a link to one of my blog articles. So I use Buffer as a tool to draw people into my blog. Um, I really like the fact that it shows you stats. Um, I like that you can go in there and schedule your posts and it can post to multiple places. Um, I uh, think the tool is valuable. Um, so you have to make that decision for your business. I know that's gonna be my answer uh, to a lot of these questions um, because they're very specific to your own business and only you guys can decide what is right and what is wrong. A lot of times we want that reassurance from someone else, um, but you uh, only learn by by making mistakes and, and trying things out. So uh, I will try to help with the questions that I can. The next question is from Beth. How does Emily copyright her blog posts? Um, 
I don't actually copyright them. I do put a warning in there because I've had uh, several Avon reps, unfortunately, in the past uh, copy word for word my blog posts, um, which is plagiarism. They started placing in the search engines uh, based on my content. So that is why I add that in there. Um, I do have a plugin on WordPress that blocks people from being able to copy it. I promised you guys I would let you know all of my WordPress plugins. I will do that. Um, so be looking in the group for that. I, um, I'm trying to catch up on my own work, on my own team. Uh, of course, the kids have gotten sick again. So uh, Ava had a sore throat Friday. Now Josh is home. Uh, it's like a never-ending winter in the uh, scary Midwest here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wishing I was uh, in somewhere warm and that uh, all these illnesses would just leave our family. <laughs> okay, next question. What kind of wording information would I suggest staying away from in a blog post for potential customers and recruits? Um... You always want your posts to be positive and uh, giving suggestions. You want calls to action. Um, you want enough content that it answers their questions. Um, basically, you want to think of your blog posts as a, a tool to help your customer or recruit decide whether they want to take that next step, whether it's purchasing a product or signing up on your team. Um, make sure you provide enough content. You don't want to just have, uh, you know, a hundred blog posts that are like two sentences long. Um, so make sure you have a good amount of content. Uh, think like your audience so that you would actually be answering questions that they might have and uh, try to provide um, non-biased information. So that's why I like to use the product reviews because it's a uh, a different source than me saying buy Avon. Um, so definitely use those reviews as tools to uh, help your customers decide if they want to purchase or not. Um, stay away from being too salesy, being uh, too blunt, like sign up. You do want to um, give strong calls to action, uh, but we don't want to like bully our, our audience into signing up with us. <laughs> so um, just make sure you're truthful, you're helpful, and you have uh, a good amount of content with calls to action throughout your article. Um, do I know how to automatically add posts to Google Collections? Um, I don't even know what Google Collections is, so I'm going to say no to that. Um, I do use Buffer to automatically post to Google, and I do know that my Google Plus page does not bring in a lot of traffic, so I don't focus on it very much. Um, Google, the search engine, does bring in a lot of traffic, and that's a result of all of, all of my blog posts. Um, so I do not spend too much time on Google+. Plus. I bet if you Google that question, you can find out how to do that. Okay, so next question is from Chris. Uh, and you guys that are watching, feel free to throw in questions uh, as I'm going or uh, give your comments or feedback. Um, next question is Chris. My WordPress blog emails do not show up with pictures without going to the post itself. Um, I noticed some of the emails that you send from the Beauty eRep blog come through in HTML. Um, I'm guessing that that is probably a feature of the, uh, the format that I picked. Um, I'm not absolutely sure. I don't know that there is a way to edit um, what the email subscribers see. But I do know uh, that I use Jetpack as my blog subscription tool. And that is a WordPress plugin. So maybe that's what's doing it. Um, again, it's called Jetpack. It has a blog subscription widget you can put on, on your blog. 
Um, and so that answers that next question. <laughs> if there's a plugin that automatically uh, subscribes people to your blog, and yes, uh, that same Jetpack one will do the same thing. Um, Karen has a question in converting from the free WordPress blog to the paid version. Um, there's been talk in the group and I've also recommended that you don't start with the free version of WordPress. The reason being, uh, WordPress does not want you referring people to another site to sell products and that's what we want to do with our blog uh, so that's why I tell you not to do that um, she's saying that she's heard some people have lost content when converting over um, I don't personally have any experience with that process or know uh, what to tell you about that I would just say that you start taking steps to move over to a different blog um, format. I would either use Blogger or go to the paid version um, because you know eventually WordPress could come and say uh, that you're you're breaking the rules. So um, definitely a good idea to start thinking about moving it somewhere else. Maybe you want to have a transition phase of uh, moving it over before you shut down that that free blog okay next questions are on hashtags uh, I would like to know how she decides what are the best hashtags from Deanna um, so I just really basically think of the words that come to the top of my mind uh, when I say a post so if I am trying to recruit a lot of times I'll think about work at home uh, moms entrepreneur CEO uh, it's just like a word association game and the simpler you keep your hashtags uh, the more likely they will expand your reach to more people um, so you don't want to get very specific hashtags like um, buy Avon indulgence lipstick um, that's not gonna be a term that people are searching for on social media um, so keep it generic uh, you know one two I would try to keep it at one to two to three words um, maybe four at the most I, I do work at home mom sometimes um, so just make sure it correlates to what you're posting about. So if I was posting about uh, mascara being on sale, I would say hashtag makeup, hashtag Avon, hashtag cosmetics, beauty, mascara. Um, so just think about uh, what the product is or whatever you're trying to post on social media about and think about um, generic terms that um, you would want to put in your hashtags. Um, I do have a YouTube video specifically on Avon hashtags so uh, look that up. Um, hopefully you'll get some ideas from there. The next question is on YouTube. Um, sh let's see, Chris is saying that I have my social media sites uh, linked there and an ab about page um, and she's having trouble getting to that. I was just looking at my YouTube account and it looks like uh, I just clicked on about and then at the bottom there it says links and I have my different social media sites linked there. Um, I'm guessing that's how I got the little <laughs> icons there. Um, I don't know exactly um, how I did it when I did it because it's been a while. Um, but I think it's coming from that about page and the links. All right, so here are miscellaneous questions. How do you keep track of no unsubscribed emails when not on the Avon site? Um, so I don't, uh, I don't usually email outside of a program. So there's always a, an automatic unsubscription option. Um, the only people that I really uh, sometimes email outside of a, a program is my team. Um, so if there are team members who are not with Avon anymore or uh, just don't want to get my emails, unfortunately I have to keep track of those uh, separately and it's uh, a manual process. But otherwise, um, 
whatever I just tell people how they can unsubscribe you know usually they're pretty friendly and and don't get nasty about that so um, I always just tell them to unsubscribe at the bottom of their email um, or like I said I keep track of those who have requested not to get emails um, all right, so let's see from Lisa. I feel like I have done everything possible to get online sales. However, I have none. All my sales are brochure and the one person I did have, I got to join Avon. Um, no shoppers online. I have a Facebook page, a blog, Pinterest. Um, so if you are uh, consistent about posting online, um, so it takes time. It's a process. If you look at my website traffic, uh, the increase was very gradual. Um, in over eight years, I know you guys don't want to hear that, <laughs> but um, after eight years, it finally started to feel like it was um, building upon itself and I was just going through the motions and still getting those online sales. But it took a lot of years of blogging and being on social media and figuring out what people want to see, what they want to read about. Um, you can't just do social media and blogging for two months and get upset that you're not getting any results. Um, so you have to always have activity. You have to improve your own work. So watch your stats um, to figure out what's working and what's not. Uh, you have to prioritize your time well um, because we can get lost in the sea of the internet. <laughs> um, so I would recommend, uh, you know, being consistent. So in your blogs, if you want to, if you have the time to post one new blog post every week, um, do a great blog post and do it once a week. Um, if you're feeling good about that and you're seeing your traffic go up, add on that you want to do another blog post every week. Um, so that's really how I've done it. I started with doing about two blog posts per month, um, and now I do it daily. So it has to be what works in your schedule and what works with your business, but you have to be consistent and you can't give up. So you have to think about, um, you know, once you have an online customer, it's much easier to maintain that customer and service them than it is a face-to-face -face customer because your online customers email address is going to be attached to you as the rep so you can't just think about getting that one-time sale you have to think that um, you're maybe getting a lifetime customer by getting that online sale um, I like to use the uh, example that if uh, you know you were to shut down your Avon business today what money would still be coming in and uh, for me you know closing down my uh, licensed beauty center would stop all of my face-to-face -face sales um, but my online sales it's kind of automated they're getting the emails they click and they go and make their purchase um, so when I retire that can still be income coming in uh, so you have to look at it differently um, you you're gonna find longer-term customers um, and you always have to have activity so make sure you're growing your networks make sure you're posting consistently um, make, make sure that you're improving your own marketing activities and adding to them uh, as you have more time and uh, hi Ann, <laughs> hi Robin um, so just make sure you're always improving on your own activity your own performance and uh, try not to get frustrated as I was growing in leadership and making really bad money I looked to those who were sharing how much money they made and it was huge numbers so look to other people's numbers for inspiration if you're feeling frustrated with your online business Alrighty, do I teach how to build a website? Uh, no, <laughs> I am not ready to take that on. Um, 
I have to be careful, guys, because I love teaching everyone and I love sharing, uh, but a lot of times I overwhelm myself and overcommit to things. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do this slowly, and I do have the February boot camp scheduled. So I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I may, be, may have been taking too much on saying that I could answer everyone's questions uh, because a lot more people signed up than I expected. Um, so I'm sorry, but I don't offer help on uh, creating websites. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, how long do you have access to the boot camp on Facebook? Um, I will probably keep those groups open unless I start getting really random like uh, member requests from people out of the country that I know don't sell Avon. <laughs> if it becomes too much admin work, um, I will send out an announcement and let you know before I shut anything down. But as of now, I plan on keeping it up um, and creating a new group for February. Uh, did you say that you have a monthly webinar on makeup marketing? Um, so yes, I have two monthly webinars um, and you can sign up for those on emilysegrin.com. Uh, one is always focused on leadership, so it's about recruiting and leadership skills. And then the other one is for all representatives. It's selling tips, recruiting tips, um, and pretty pretty much all all Av all things Avon. So uh, feel free to join both of them. Um, February. Let's see, we're doing February. 9th is the leadership one and February 23rd is the one for all reps. So uh, I invite you all to join those. Those are free. Okay, I want to add, Sally has a question. I want to add old leads to my address book so I can contact them with emails to encourage them to sign up. However, web office doesn't have recruiting emails. Any thoughts on that? Um, so I've kind of created my own, uh, emails to send out to leads. Uh, there is, you know, an advantage to having your own email list because you can control the content, um, but that also will have a cost associated. Um, what we do is we add customers to our our web office and usually if they have a question about signing up to sell they'll submit that contact me request um, I am capturing all of my leads in uh, constant contact so um, you may want to look at that program it may make sense to keep track of your leads in a, an email program outside of the Avon web office um, so all these tools, you know, they they can help your business a lot. They can save you time, uh, but a lot of them cost money. So just make sure that it, it makes sense for you to add on another tool and make sure you're getting the value out of it for what it costs you every month. Um, so if you guys have uh, any other questions, I think I made it through uh, the whole list. I don't see any comments, so I don't know if I have, if, it's, if they're not coming through or um, if you guys are just listening. But <laughs> I don't see any comments, so I guess I will, uh, I will post this and, uh, you know, go sign up for my upcoming February webinars. If you want to join the next boot camp, that is posted as well. Um, and then your January boot camp will be available in that Emily Segrin website for you to review whenever you want. Um, so yes, that website is sell selling my training, but it's also a tool that will hold any of the courses that you buy um, so that you have a central location to watch all of the training you've purchased. So it's a very powerful website. Um, I'm not just trying to sell you more. It does hold your training. Uh, go under the My Library link and you should be able to find uh, all the courses that you've ever purchased. 
All right, so I hope you guys have a a fabulous week. I'm going to try and get my family healthy so uh, I can get back into a routine and, and we all can uh, be happier around here. <laughs> we're in the Midwest and it's dreary and the sun's not coming out, but we're still making the best of it. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this session and I'll talk to you later. Bye.